This is my National Geographic uh, Teacher Certification Capstone Project. And we're going to be showing you a project here today that is called Mapping and Modeling. Are we going to be on the Facebook? Miss Johnson's. I feel like she gives me more than Mr. No. Leitner gives you. But it took her a while to like let me actually. Like, yeah, I've, I went one night. I mean, she always lets me do stuff, but not like the easy things. You know, like, oh, like, I was ready to do the first and all that stuff, and she was really? like, oh, oh, she tried to do that. As teachers, we want to immerse our students using visuals, literature, maps and globes, various technologies, all of this in order to create a full, rich idea of geography. As we look at a few samples of the students' work, uh, one thing I'd like you to notice is that we're aiming for realism, uh, the proper colors, the proper shapes, uh, and getting things looking like you'd find them in the real world and things you might find on maps. We're doing this on a six by six piece of cardboard and we've painted these uh, different landforms with a basic water-based paint. Alright, now after we created uh, our landforms using our GeoGoop and we painted them and we tried to be as realistic as possible uh, now it's time to move into another kind of realism and begin looking at maps. And we want to do this using technology. Uh, we decided to use the National Geographic Map Maker Interactive for that purpose. And uh, this is a very straightforward program. It combines some very powerful features and it does so in a simple to use format. And in the elementary classroom, that's really huge. We're always looking for ways to provide sophisticated experiences with technology for our students. And when we can find something that's simple yet powerful, then we have a wonderful opportunity to set up for our kids to use technology. Here's an example uh, of student work that shows four icons put in the area of the Grand Canyon. We have a people icon, we have a general marker icon, we have this rectangular icon, and we have a fish icon. And we would try to help the students understand that icons matter. For example, if I click on the fish, I find out that there are eight species of fish that are endemic to the Colorado River. We'd get into the vocabulary word, but actually what we're looking at here too uh, is the scientific research going on with the fish that do live there. We could also click on the person, and the person would tell us these are the Native Americans that live in this area for over 800 years that are known to be um, residents of this area. And they are called the uh, Havasupai tribe, so the students could learn about that. On our general marker, we have not only the Grand Canyon marker, but we have what our students would have made to, to uh, uh, show their interpretation of the Grand Canyon. Once again, pointing out that we're trying to have colors as close to realism as we possibly can here. So I'll close that up. And then we finally we had this last icon. Let me click over here. I clicked on the wrong one. A photo of the Grand Canyon that we could compare to what the students have actually made as far as the colors uh, the striation of the various layers of rock and so forth. We can also see that we can add information right here and in this case the information added was that there's some sort of a debate about the age of the Grand Canyon depending on which portion of it you look at and that could range from 15 million to 70 million years. So th those are some interesting facts and things that our students can add with the icons they put in and this of course is part of the assignment. We are using the Map Maker Interactive to show one of the parts of this assignment that the students had to complete. Um, as you can see, we have two areas marked here. This first area here is the Grand Canyon, and then down here we're in Panama, where we're showing an isthmus. Now the object uh, of the assignment, one of the parts, is to connect the landforms as we travel around the world. And we will do that with using the line tool 
and not only will we connect them and and go in a straight line between them but we will find the uh, number of miles or the number of kilometers in this case so we'll select the land to the line tool we'll start here at the Grand Canyon go down to Panama and click and we show our straight line distance and we also see that we have 4,395 kilometers between. The students will do this traveling all around the world.